I, I don't I don't know. I mean, I, you know, Andrew has messaged me over the past few days, and um, I, we haven't had that discussion, to be honest with you. And I'm not sure if that fight makes sense for Jake, given where his career is at right now in terms of boxing. And I'm okay. not sure that fight transcends across different gener like that that definitely for the young male demo that's a massive fight nakisa badarian jake paul's business partner has broken his silence on the growing rumors of a potential fight between jake paul and andrew tate in a recent statement badarian revealed that tate had reached out but doubts remain about whether this fight aligns with jake paul's career trajectory he claims it's a massive fight that could captivate the young male audience before Nikisa's response, Andrew Tate shook the internet with a bold challenge to Jake Paul. Known for his outspoken nature, Tate criticized Paul's career and internet fame, questioning his legitimacy as a fighter. He even proposed a multi-million dollar bet, offering to come out of retirement to face Paul in the ring. Tate's callout added serious heat to the growing buzz around this potential fight. Jake Paul, it's clear to me you are desperate for a reality check. You know what, if I made my money impressing four-year-olds on YouTube and managed to somehow become a multi-millionaire from it, I'd probably live in a dream world too. Andrew Tate didn't hold back as he delved deeper into the world of combat sports, contrasting Jake Paul's fame with the struggles of dedicated fighters. He pointed out the sacrifices real athletes make, often without receiving recognition or financial rewards, while questioning Paul's legitimacy in the sport. He stated, but let me explain to you something about combat sports. There are a whole bunch of men out here who will never be as famous as you, who will never make the money you've made, but would kick the living f out of you. Tate further elaborated on the brutal nature of the sport, emphasizing that for most fighters, success remains out of reach. His comments underscored the immense dedication required and the reality that many never see the rewards they deserve. He stated, This is the hardest sport and people dedicate their lives to this, and most of them never get a payday. It never pays off for the majority of the fighters, all of which would f you up. Tate's callout wasn't just verbal, he made things interesting by putting $3 million on the table, daring Paul to back up his reputation in the ring. I'm one of the lucky ones. I made a little bit of money. I don't have 50 million to bet with you, but I do have 3 million to bet with you. So this is your offer. $3 million. You put three, I put three. Winner takes all. I'm five years out the ring. I'm a kickboxer. You're 2-0 and in boxing. I'm 0-0 in boxing. I've never even fought boxing. I'm a retired old man. Five years I've been sitting around smoking cigars and which are better looking than the girl you're advertising anyway. In a surprising twist, Tate openly admitted his lack of boxing experience while maintaining his confidence in beating Paul. He stated, I'm five years out of the ring. I'm a kickboxer and you own the boxing and I'm zero and zero in boxing. I never fought boxing. I am a retired old man. Five years been sitting around smoking cigars and bitches. You're better looking than the girl in your advertising anyway. Tate dismissed other high-profile opponents like Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather, insisting Jake Paul should focus on him instead. I'm not sure how it I would moves outside of that, so I just have to spend time with Andrew and Jake and see if it's something that they want to Returning to his earlier point, Tate attacked Paul's internet persona, contrasting it with the reality of combat sports. He stated, I live in the real f***ing world, Jake. There is a whole bunch of fighters out here living in the real f***ing world. Men who are dangerous and dedicated their lives to this sport. I don't have a f***ing fraction of the money you have because you managed to become a f***ing clown, the biggest clown on the f***ing internet. Tate ended his video with a clear invitation to fight, leaving Jake Paul to make the next move. He stated, if you want to fight, you want to send a contract, send one to me. Tate said in a video that has already caused a stir online, I will take a few weeks break from living my retired life to kick the living f out of f goofy any day any time following tate's explosive call out nakisa badarian acknowledged the buzz but remained cautious about its potential while he recognized that this would be a massive fight badarian doubted its broader impact and whether it aligned with jake paul's long-term boxing goals massive fight but I'm not sure how it I would moves outside of that, so I just have to spend time with Andrew and Jake and see if it's something that they want. Nikisa also shared his admiration for Andrew Tate, stating that he appreciates Tate's passion and the way he aims to serve the world. Despite this respect, Nikisa admitted he is unsure if this fight aligns with Jake Paul's goals or if it's a path they want to pursue at this point in his career. Love Andrew Tate. Uh, he's good good man in many ways in terms of his his desire to give back to the world and I, I don't know where you know where his head's at in life in terms of what he wants to do 
as if the tension wasn't high enough. Former super middleweight champion Carl Frosch has also thrown his hat in the ring, literally. Frosch, never one to mince words, recently called out Jake Paul, questioning his skills and challenging him to prove himself against a real boxer. Frosch's comments add another layer of intrigue to the already heated debate over Jake Paul's next opponent. Frosch took to X to challenge Jake Paul, making it clear that even in retirement, he believed he could finish Paul with ease. Listen up, Jakey boy. I'm 11 years retired, not done a round of boxing for over a decade. I'm old, gray, and out of shape, but I'd still give your missus the best night of her life. I bet she dreams about a real man. Let me know if you still want your cars washing. She can let me in through the back door. P.S. I'd knock you out in 30 seconds. You are useless. Frotch wasn't done, he later addressed the back and forth, clarifying that he wasn't chasing a fight or looking for a payday, but emphasized that if the opportunity arose, he would have no hesitation stepping into the ring. He stated, and then you've got someone like me. He mentioned me before, and there'll be people out there saying, oh, Carl Frosch is talking about himself. He's after a payday. Listen, I'm not after a payday. I'm doing all right, no problems with my finances. Frotch then turned his attention to Jake Paul's boxing skills, or what he perceived as the the lack of them. He openly mocked Paul's abilities in the ring, using Paul's performance against Mike Tyson as an example to highlight his limitations. Frotch confidently claimed that it wouldn't take much effort to expose Paul, suggesting that he could finish the fight with a single punch and even joked about doing it one-handed. His remarks were sharp and dismissive, leaving no doubt about his view of Paul's capabilities as a boxer. But I'll take the f***ing payday, of course I will, and I'll end Jake Paul with one punch. I'd go in there one armed and beat this guy. He can't box. He's absolutely fucking useless, which we saw last night with Mike Tyson. While Frotch acknowledged Paul's ability to sell tickets and draw attention, he argued that Paul still hasn't reached the level of filling massive arenas like true boxing legends. He stated, They won't be sending me an email. They won't be contacting my agent to get a fight because they know I ain't calling him out. I'm just letting you know that he knows that I know if I went in there with Jake Paul, it would be an absolute mismatch. Frotch addressed the possibility of a fight, but was confident that Paul's team would never pursue it, knowing how one-sided the matchup would be. He stated, But I tell you what, my mobile phone won't be ringing, will it? They won't be sending me an email. They won't be contacting my agent to get a fight because they know. I ain't calling him out. I'm just letting you know that he knows that I know. Frotch further reinforced his confidence, dismissing the idea of Jake Paul being a legitimate challenge. He described a potential fight as a complete mismatch, confidently asserting that it wouldn't last more than one round. Frotch even joked that he could defeat Paul with one arm tied behind his back, emphasizing just how little he thought of Paul's abilities in the ring. I ain't calling him out, I'm just letting you know that he knows that I know. If I went in there with Jake Paul, it would be an absolute mismatch, one round demolition job. Frotch didn't stop at dismissing Jake Paul's abilities. He painted a vivid and almost theatrical picture of how he believed a fight between them would play out. Using humor and cutting remarks, he detailed how easily he could dominate Paul in the ring, leaving no doubt about his confidence. He stated, just imagine one arm behind the back, just lining him up with his right hand and eventually levering him with a big upper, a big over and dirty stinker. Put him in the El Sparco position like he's been tasered. Meanwhile, Jake Paul, never one to shy away from a war of words, fired back at Frotch with a sharp and fiery response. Unbothered by Frotch's confidence, Paul dismissed him as irrelevant and bitter, delivering a sharp response that quickly went viral. He tweeted, F***ing sour loser, shut the f up. I've done more in four years than you have in your life. First and last time I respond to your broke salty ass. Let me know if you want to wash my cars. Carl Frotch didn't hesitate to respond to Jake Paul's fiery tweet. He stood by his earlier remarks, reaffirming his belief that Paul lacked real boxing skills. Frotch confidently stated that his critique was honest and widely shared, making it clear that he had no regrets about his strong opinions. He emphasized that his comments weren't personal, but rather an objective assessment of Paul's abilities in the ring. Frotch also pointed out that many in the boxing community shared his viewpoint, adding weight to his claims. With his unwavering stance, Frosch showed no signs of backing down from the heated exchange. And Jake Paul didn't like what I said because I called him useless. Because let's be honest, he is. When it comes to boxing, 
is useless. I think everybody agrees. Frotch took another jab at Jake Paul, this time mocking Paul's response on social media. Frotch pointed out an error in Paul's message, ridiculing his choice of words and questioning his ability to even construct a proper insult. He highlighted the irony of being called a loser, firmly reminding Paul that he hadn't lost and reinforcing his dominance in the exchange. Frotch's sharp wit and sarcasm added another layer to the escalating war of words. Let's have a look. Let's get a look at what he actually said to me. So his message on X to me is sour loser. I think he meant sore loser, so he have a can't spell, but he's got the saying wrong. He's calling me a sore loser. I didn't lose, mate. Frosch also addressed Jake Paul's claim of achieving more in four years than Frotch had in his entire career. He dismissed this boast, questioning what Paul had truly accomplished in that short time. Frotch's tone was incredulous, highlighting the stark difference between their careers. He stated, are you going to come near me? I doubt it, you won't, you won't even try. He's bragging, saying, I've done more in four years than you have in your life. Come on, really? What has he done in four years? Let's talk about it. Roch shifted his focus to Jake Paul's boxing resume, calling it unimpressive and lacking credibility. He specifically pointed out Paul's loss to Tommy Fury, who Frotch labeled as a developing boxer far from world-class level. Frotch made it clear that Paul's choice of opponents reflected his limited limited ability and not any genuine success in the sport. He stated, in his so-called four-year boxing career, what's he actually achieved? The one professional fighter he faced was Tommy Fury, and he lost that fight. And let's be honest, Tommy Fury is at best British level, at best. I don't even think Tommy Fury could win a British title now. He's still developing, still growing, but Jake fought him because it was a payday for Tommy. Frotch then called out the quality of Jake Paul's wins, criticizing his record of defeating retired MMA fighters and aging athletes. He highlighted that none of these victories held any real significance in the world of boxing, calling Paul's career nothing more than a sham. He stated, and fair play to Tommy for taking it. But Jake, he can't claim any real credit for his career, beating Anderson Silva, beating retired MMA fighters who can't box, or beating Nate Diaz in a fight that was meaningless. That's not a legacy. Frotch contrasted Paul's record with his own illustrious career, detailing his 12 consecutive world title fights and his legendary knockout of George Groves at Wembley. The comparison was intended to highlight the vast gap in accomplishments between the two, with Frotch leaving no doubt about his superior legacy. He stated, Now, compare that to my career, my Hall of Fame career. 12 consecutive world title fights, from beating Jean Pascal to defending against Jermaine Taylor, all the way to knocking out George Groves in front of 80,000 fans at Wembley Stadium. Frotch didn't stop at Paul's boxing skills. He also criticized his lack of mainstream appeal. He pointed out the contrast between his own ability to fill stadiums with fans and Jake Paul's reliance on a younger, social media-driven audience. Frotch suggested that Paul's fame was superficial and unworthy of comparison. And he stated, and then look at Jake Paul's fight at AT&T Stadium. He didn't even sell 80,000 tickets, did he? He's pulling in views on Netflix, sure. But let's be honest, his audience is teenage boys who follow him on YouTube. Frotch bluntly called Jake Paul a fraud, accusing him of misleading fans by pretending to be a legitimate fighter. He argued that Paul's entire career was built on spectacle rather than skill, and no real fighters took him seriously. You've got your teeny bopper audience for your YouTube. You're a content creator. You're a YouTuber. Jake Paul is not a fighter. He's not a boxer. He's playing at the game. He's pretending. He's conning everybody. He's not fooling any, any real fighters. He's not fooling any boxing purists. We all know what he is. We all know he's a professional taker, and he's pretty good at it. Frotch turned his attention to Jake Paul's controversial fight with Mike Tyson, calling it exploitative and disgraceful. He expressed his disappointment that Paul would use Tyson, a boxing legend with health issues, for his own gain, accusing Paul of tarnishing Tyson's legacy. He stated, and then there's the disgrace of him fighting a 58-year-old Mike Tyson who's on medication for various health issues. It's disgusting. Mike Tyson is a legend, and Jake is just exploiting his name. Frotch further mocked Jake Paul's inability to dominate Tyson, despite the latter's age and health concerns. He accused Paul of being scared in the ring and suggested that the fight was staged, calling it a scam designed to deceive fans. 
he stated, and yet Jake still couldn't do anything with him in the ring. He was scared to death, and it looked like Mike was fighting to a script. It's all a big scam, and people are paying to see it. Crotch addressed Jake Paul directly, criticizing his attempts to compare himself to legitimate fighters. He argued that Paul's career was built on spectacle rather than competition, and accused him of avoiding serious opponents who could genuinely challenge him. And he stated, Jake, stop comparing yourself to me. You live in a clown world, pretending to be a fighter. People only tune in because they want to see you get knocked out, but you're too scared to fight anyone who can actually do it. That's why you fought an old Mike Tyson instead of someone legitimate. Crotch also clarified that he had no desire to fight Jake Paul, emphasizing that he was happily retired and had nothing left to prove. However, he maintained that if he ever did face Paul in the ring, the outcome would be overwhelmingly one-sided with Frotch confident that he could win effortlessly. He stated, let me be clear, I don't want to fight Jake Paul, I've got no intentions of lacing up the gloves again. I'm 47 years old, retired for 11 years, and I've achieved everything I wanted in boxing. But if I ever did step into the ring with Jake, it wouldn't even be a fight. I'd beat him with one arm tied behind my back. It'd be that easy. Meanwhile, Carl Frotch also accused Jake Paul of deliberately avoiding any potential fight with him. Frotch suggested that Paul was unwilling to even acknowledge him seriously, instead trying to downplay his relevance and dismiss his presence in the boxing world. However, Frotch noted that Paul's recent response on social media indicated otherwise, showing that Frotch's comments had clearly struck a nerve. He stated, he wouldn't fight me. I'm 47 years old. He's got no intentions of coming anywhere near me. He's just trying to dismiss me, trying to forget I even exist and saying he doesn't know who I am, but he couldn't help himself the other day, could he? On X, he had to respond because I got under his skin. Frotch then shifted focus to Paul's reputation, or lack thereof, among professional boxing circles. He confidently stated, that Paul's inability to box was an open secret within the sport. Frotch made it clear that Paul's lack of skill was why he avoided legitimate competition, emphasizing that a match between them would be an absolute mismatch. He stated, It kills Jake Paul to know that all professional boxing people, all people within the professional boxing world, know that he cannot box. He's not a professional boxer. If it ever happened, and I don't want to fight him, I've got no interest. But if it did happen, you know what would happen. He get El Sparco in the first round. Absolute mismatch. That's why he won't come anywhere near me. Crotch also made his intentions clear that he was only calling out Jake Paul for financial gain. To silence these critics, Frotch reiterated his earlier stance of being willing to fight Paul for charity. He clarified that his intentions were not about money, but about proving a point and shutting down the hype surrounding Paul's boxing career. I could beat him with one arm, literally. It'd be so easy, but I've got no intentions. This isn't a call out. I'm not interested in fighting him. I did say previously to all the haters that say, oh, Frotch is looking for a payday. I did say that I'll do this fight for charity just to shut him up. So I don't want paying. So Carl Frotch isn't looking for a payday. The clash of words between Jake Paul, Andrew Tate, and Carl Frosch has set the internet ablaze, sparking heated debates about boxing legitimacy, fame, and true skill. Nakisa Badarian's cautious remarks added fuel to the fire, highlighting the potential of a Paul versus Tate showdown while acknowledging the challenges and aligning it with Paul's career goals. Andrew Tate, with his bold and biting callouts, dared Jake to step into the ring, promising a fight that would shake the boxing and social media worlds. Carl Frosch, on the other hand, provided a hard-hitting critique of Jake Paul's career, questioning his legitimacy as a boxer while contrasting it with his own Hall of Fame legacy. From calling Paul a content creator to mocking his fight choices, Frotch didn't hold back. <laughs> while he made it clear he has no interest in returning to the ring, Frotch's confidence in easily defeating Paul painted a vivid picture of what a fight between them could look like. The back and forth between these three personalities has captivated fans and critics alike. Will Jake Paul rise to the challenge and face Andrew Tate? Will Carl Frotch's fiery words remain just that? Or could we see him and Jake Paul square off in the ring? What do you think? Should Jake Paul take on Andrew Tate, Carl Frosch, or both? Or will this just remain a war of words? Share your thoughts in the comments below and stay tuned for more updates and videos on boxing news.